Well, the time has come. You wanted it, I'm going to give it to you. My take on MoFi's Source Point 10 speakers. You guys have seen that earlier video where I was very critical of this speaker. And the feedback you guys gave me was, how could you possibly talk about a speaker you've never owned? I am so disappointed at you, Jay, for doing this. Oh, you're not going to be disappointed now. They are right here with me. And you're about to find out if this speaker is really worth all the hype and if you should be buying this speaker. So, without further delays, let's get into it. Let's go. Okay guys, well the time has come for me to give you my take on this speaker, but before I do that, please subscribe, hit that like button right now. If you want me to do this type of reviews in 2023 and you want me to bring affordable speakers like these right here next to me, okay, you have to hit that subscribe button right now. If I don't see an uptake on subscriptions, that means you guys don't want me to do any of this, okay? So I leave this up to you. The more people subscribe, the more I am going to be doing this, okay? Going forward, bringing you affordable speakers and giving you my opinion, the opinion of a man who lives with the ultra high end. So let's get started with the MoFi speakers. Okay, so MoFi Source Point 10 speakers. Uh, these speakers were, uh, the first time I saw these speakers was at Capital Audio Fest 2022. So it was approximately three months ago. Um, and I had a brief moment with them. I didn't really get a lot of great positive feedback from a lot of people. But of course, there was always this narrative that the speakers are amazing, that they are really the best thing since sliced bread. So I felt, you know what, I felt the need to bring him into my room, buy him, and just talk about them. But before I do that, let me give you a little bit of introduction as far as what this speaker is about. So this speaker is a $3,700 speaker, okay? $3,700, made in China. So I know some of you guys might be up, you know, really against the fact that they are made in China, but I'm just here to report, okay? Uh, and they are designed by Andrew Jones. Now, Andrew Jones is a well-known loudspeaker designer. He's designed speakers for Pioneer. I believe he designed a $100 speaker for Pioneer. He's also done speakers for TAD and ELAC. So the guy has a long, long, long history of building quality speakers, affordable speakers for the most part, although he's done some expensive speakers as well. So he partnered up with MoFi. MoFi hired him and he started working on this speaker for the last two years, right in the middle of the pandemic. Um, and as you know, that was quite challenging because he had to essentially send out requirements to different manufacturers. For instance, he would draw up a sketch of the driver he wanted and he would basically have it built. It would come back to him, he would evaluate it, and then he would decide if it's sinking or swimming as far as what the particular component was doing. So it was very challenging for him because he didn't really have anybody to come and give him recommendations as to like, hey, you know, we have a better material for the driver or hey, we have something that you should, you should look at. He wasn't really getting that kind of support. So he was on his own. So I give Andrew Jones a lot of kudos for being in the middle of the pandemic with all the challenges that we had and still be capable of producing this speaker, okay? So that's a little backstory so you understand how this speaker was born. Now, yes, we know MoFi had a big scandal last year. I was very, very open about this. Everyone knows about the scandal that MoFi is in the middle of, okay? They essentially, you know what they did? They basically created records vinyl and they decided to tell everyone those are copies of digital formats they are not real analog tapes so that created a whole backlash an entire disaster a lot of people a lot of lawsuits you know and so they are in the middle of a legal battle now this is public record this is public information you can google this yourself okay i'm giving you a high level overview of what is going on with mofi 
anyway, so MoFind has never been into manufacturing loudspeakers. That is not really something that they're into. So they hire Andrew Jones for this particular reason, and Andrew Jones ran with it, okay? So for now, I am going to go over the pros of this speaker, living with this speaker, okay? Now, you know how I do it. Nobody does it to the extreme like I do here on YouTube. When I evaluated this speaker throughout the past few weeks, this speaker was always connected to the monstrous Boulder 3050s, my 3010, and of course my MSB Select 2. So yes, the speakers essentially were powered by over half a million dollars worth of electronics, something that you will never see here on YouTube, okay? Most of the reviewers out there will show you this connected to an average integrated, will show you this connected to just subpar electronics, and I don't do things that way. Let me go over the pros of the speaker now, okay? Number one, I like the imaging of the speaker. It is very, very pinpoint, the accuracy of the speaker. You hear the imaging just be precise, left to right, right to left, right? It is, it is almost, almost, it gives me the feeling that I'm listening to like a panel, okay? The pinpoint accuracy of this type of speaker design, the concentric driver, okay? That's one thing that I really like. Number two, the speakers are actually very easy to listen to. And what I mean by that is they don't make you want to wear your analytical hat, if that makes sense. They're there to just kind of caress you. They're there to play music and make you forget about your day. They're not there to make you observe what the system isn't doing, if that makes sense. So I thought that was quite interesting coming from Magical, Wilson, uh, Focals, um, I never realized that sometimes you might get caught thinking or wearing your analytical hat with those speakers. This speaker really doesn't do that because to be honest with you, it isn't exactly the master or anything in particular. So you kind of accept that when you sit down and you just kind of push play and enjoy the presentation. So I think that's one of the coolest effects that this speaker has going for it. Another pro that I found with the speaker is the fact that they're light in weight. So it's quite easy to tow them in and tow them out. It doesn't take a lot of work per se, okay? It's something that it's done quickly on like some of the massive speakers that I've owned here in the past, where it took my wife and other people to help me to position them, okay? To tow them in and tow them out. This is a very simple speaker to set up. It doesn't take a lot of hard work. Another pro of this speaker is the mid-range. I really, really enjoy the mid-range presentation. It's very, very dead center, locked in right here. Where you see my chest, it's exactly where the mid-range is, right here. It never really feels incoherent. I opened up the speakers approximately nine feet right now. That's how far apart they are, more or less, from tweeter to tweeter, more or less, okay? And the, the mid-range just stays coherent. It doesn't completely dismantle. Okay, um, I always felt as if I had my cent a center channel playing between the speakers. So that is actually something that was really cool. And it's the same effect that my Magical, my former Magical S7 also gave me. Okay, but it was quite easy to do this with the speaker. It didn't take a lot of work. But once again, if you have crazy furniture in the middle, huge home entertainment centers, that center image might be compromised. So make sure that when you set up the speakers, you have nothing right around here, okay? So that you can get the same effect that I am getting. Now, when it comes to the sound stage, I find the sound stage good, not great, but pretty good for the most part. You get a lot of information um, and a lot of air around the speaker, okay? Now, the speaker is not really going to create the same bubble effect as other speakers that I've had. And it's not because of lack of power. I have a lot of power, okay? But keep in mind that the speaker also goes, only goes down to 42 hertz. So it doesn't have any bass per se, okay? It's not a speaker that has a tremendous amount of bass, all right? It does go up to 30,000 kilohertz, but it has limitations on the low registers, okay? So don't expect to be throwing a party at the house 
and feel like you're, the, the bass is going to hit you in the chest. This is not what the intent of this loudspeaker is. Okay, keep that in mind with this speaker. Another thing that I liked about the speaker was the fact that nothing sounded very exaggerated, meaning everything was pretty, pretty even top to bottom, okay? The high frequency might get a little hot at times, so be careful with the pairing uh, that you're going to select, the pairing amplifier for this speaker or preamplifier. You got to be really careful, okay, because I can see how sometimes the speaker might get a little hot in the top end, so having smooth electronics for instance i would say pass laps would be great probably for this great amplifier i would say tube gear could be great for this speaker but i would probably stay away from something like luxman i, I try hegel with it i didn't like it i have a hegel h30 in the room i didn't like it class a amplifiers are probably going to be good for it um, so you have some sort of limitations when it comes to the level of electronics that the speaker is going to play nice with okay if you don't do your proper system matching this speaker might get bright on you so be careful with that now personally you know i do think this speaker needs quality amplification although the specifications state that it only needs 30 watts and that it is a 91 db uh, efficiency rating so it should be on paper a quality a, an easy load for any amplifier that's it i just feel that quality watts quality power is almost mandatory with this speaker okay because if you don't really feed it power it's already a speaker that has um limitations in the low registers so if you put an anemic amplifier it's going to get that much worse okay and as far as soundstage, it's not the largest sounding speaker that I have ever had in the lab. It isn't by any means. Granted, it is a much, it's a much smaller cabinet, right, enclosure, uh, but it doesn't really give me the feeling of the speakers walking out of the room, if that makes sense. They don't really walk out of the room, the speakers. They have a, a limited amount of sound staging and that to me sometimes was somewhat bothersome because I'm used to a big presentation. That's one of the biggest things I look for with any loudspeaker. So quality watts guys are a must with this speaker to really wake it up, to really make it spread its wings. Some other speakers out there, you, don't really, you really do not need to do this with them because the design is already an expansive sound stage, a big presentation. But with these, that was somewhat limited. And by the way, I have to concur with a lot of the reviewers online. I do believe that the speaker can get bright at times. There is no lying in that. So you have to be careful with the electronics that you're going to use with this speaker, okay? Cables, my cable line, for instance, sounds wonderful. It doesn't seem to get bright. It doesn't seem to shout out. It doesn't seem to scream at you. It doesn't seem to do any of that. But yeah, granted, my cables are probably too pricey given the price point of this speaker at $3,700, okay? So I am assuming that someone who buys this speaker is not going to be embarking on spending $5,000 on a power cord, $3,000 on interconnects and speaker cables, okay? But I'm just throwing it out there that my cable line did not really um, have any brightness with the speaker. It actually sounded pretty good. The most important part is the amplification and pre-amplification. You have to, again, once again, you have to be careful with the speaker or it can get bright, okay? I don't really know why that is. I thought that some of the reviewers out there who stated this were just full of crap, okay? But they were right. I have to be with them on this one, okay? They were telling the truth. I wish, you know, Andrew Jones can actually address some of these feelings that a lot of us reviewers are having as far as brightness. Um, maybe we're doing something wrong. Maybe we need to throw them out more. Maybe we throw them in a little more. I've tried a lot, by the way, guys, as far as placements, as far as the towing, and still I couldn't shake off all the brightness completely. Now, with that said, if you are listening at low volume levels, okay, if you listen to the speaker at low volumes, you're not gonna have a problem. I can tell you that right now, you're not gonna have a problem. But if you get volume control happy and you start pressing down on that volume button, and you start increasing the volume on your on the presentation you are probably not going to last very long okay it's just the nature of the speaker uh you know i know a thing or two as far as far as how to tame down that extra excess energy in the upper registers 
okay but some of you guys may not know how to do that so just wanted to make sure you understand that so let's go over the speaker and the dimensions of the speakers all right so so we have an understanding it is approximately 15 inches deep by 14 inches wide and using the stands that I bought okay this might change depending on the type of stand you get speaker stands at about 43 inches tall okay so guys it isn't really too imposing as far as the weight not very heavy <laughs> 46 pounds so you should be able to pick it up yourself and you know not eat, not hard to move around the room when you need to get the toe in correct all right now let me go over the speaker itself okay so this is a 10 inch concentric driver in the middle you have a 1.25 inch silk dome tweeter if you're asking me what is a concentric driver all that means is that everything is coming out of one driver essentially everything is housed in one driver you're not going to see a tweeter separately a mid-range driver separately it's all coming out of here okay now one of the reasons why andrew jones created and went for a 10 inch woofer is because he says there is less excursion coming out of this size of woofer which i found quite interesting okay now when we talk about the positioning of the speaker okay now follow me guys what i felt sounded the very best was not to tow the speakers aggressively towards your ears i still wanted a slight toe out slightly where i can see a little bit of the cabinet of basically the inside of the cabinet that allowed me to get less of a I wouldn't say brightness but I can't think of a better word okay the brightness was less present okay so it was a lot also the sound stage opened up a little more I personally preferred the speaker as far as how far away they are from the room guys in my room every speaker will always be far away from the wall behind them because I always believe that this is the best placement for any speaker it allows the speaker to breathe better to create much more layerings of information behind it okay so i'm not saying you guys should do this but for me i prefer the speaker to be this way okay now for a for an msrp of thirty seven hundred dollars usd in my opinion the speaker definitely performs it certainly didn't have me wanting anymore considering the price point now is it better than a magical speaker is it better than a speaker a wilson audio speaker that's three times the money no folks this is not the speaker that you are going to be buying to replace your current fifteen thousand dollar loudspeaker twenty thousand dollar loudspeaker i don't believe this speaker was designed with that in mind it wasn't trying to take out other brands that cost far more money it has its place it is a good value proposition. I don't believe you're going to be disappointed in the least. That said, let me go over the cons of the speaker. What I find, I wish they could have done better. Let's just say it that way. Um, I, I don't like the fact that it's made in China because of course, guys, uh, construction can be suspect. There's a lot of shortcuts that are typically associated with anything built in China. I also feel that they should have come out with their own stands so that it makes it easier for potential buyers to just go for the whole package deal, the stands and the speaker, rather than you having to go out there to finding stands and not knowing if they're going to be the right stands for the speaker. Okay, so I think it's a smart idea if MoFi may be eventually released matching stands for the speakers so that those buyers don't have to worry and begin to tinker or get confused as to which is the right stand for the speaker which height how high up should they be right because remember stands can be different in terms of height so if you're hearing this mofi i think you should really consider you know building stands 
for this speaker, okay? To make it easier for those potential buyers of yours. And last but not least, I'd say, as far as another con, the speaker is not going to really, really wow you with a massive sound stage and information behind your head. I don't think I got those aspects of the presentations thrown at me. I feel the speakers did do great imaging, but they didn't really wow me. They didn't really make me feel as if I was inside the music. Does that make sense? So that is something that I always kept wanting. Um, and even with my expensive, crazy Boulder amplifiers and the Boulder preamplifier behind it, okay, I simply was unable to capture that beautiful bubble effect that a lot of the speakers you guys typically see on my channel are capable of doing, okay? So other than that, guys, I don't have any negative things to say about the speaker. I think it's doing exactly what it is supposed to be doing at the $3,700 price point. Uh, it is not taking on any heavy hitters as far as loudspeakers, okay? I have to say that, so make sure you keep that into perspective. But if your budget is $3,700, I don't see anything wrong with buying this speaker because the reality is a lot of the top-end brands do not build speakers at this price point, okay? Typically, you're gonna see them starting at around 8,000 and then go north from there. So it is far more money than the price point of this speaker. Okay, guys. That's all I got for today. I hope you guys have enjoyed my review of the MoFi Source 10 loudspeaker. A speaker that I was very critical of last year. A speaker that I had to bring into the lab and review. And it's all because of you. And if you want to see more affordable products in my lab in 2023, you have to hit the subscribe button right now and show me that support because that is the only way I'm going to continue to do this. If I don't see an uptick on subscriptions, that lets me know you do not want to see any of this going forward, and I will move away from this and continue to review the ultra high-end 24-7. You have the opportunity now to have me do both the ultra high-end and the affordable electronics as well. Until next time, peace.